Rodin will become a well-known artist very, very quickly, and as such gets one of the biggest commissions in Paris in the late 19th century, a set of doors for what would have been the Paris Decorative Arts Museum. But of course the museum will never be built, but we are left with his gates of, Par gates of hell. Sorry, I went the wrong direction with that. So as we look at the gates of hell, we have over 200 figures pouring off of the doors over the jams and onto the lintel of this massive bronze monolith. Now, the doors itself were based on Dante's Inferno, as so many Renaissance and later arts are. Dante, of course, explaining throughout his text the various circles of hell, the various fates of people depending on their level of sin. And he bases, Rodin bases his idea on the gates of paradise by Ghiberte in the 15th century in Florence, but quickly abandons the idea of creating individual frame narratives in favor of one continuous image with all of these figures. Now, as we look at it, you see there's a mix of extremely high relief, very low relief. The piece also seems a little bit unfinished, and that's because Rodin is working on it for over 20 years. It's never really a finished work in his eyes, or doesn't appear to be. Now, if we look at a couple of elements, at the top of the doors, we see the three shades, these elements of death and despair, and we see figures that seem to be coming together at the head and at the hand, as if the three figures are becoming one. Now, this is going back to some of the ideas you see in Dante and other uh, earlier texts from the classical world, where they talk about the afterlife as sort of a lake of souls, as everyone kind of coming together in one place, this place where indivi individuality ceases to exist. And so we get these awkward forms where there's a little bit of distortion. You can imagine as the sun travels over them and the different sense you're going to get. You get a sense of suffering, but it's primarily through the body form rather than through the facial features. Very interesting pieces, and he has stretched them and manipulated them to make them feel uncomfortable, spiritual, but not in a positive angel, uh, Virgin Mary sort of way, but in a, well, these guys are in some form of hell sort of way. We also famously see the thinker who sits right above the rest of the doors, looking down, resting his powerful chin on his hand. And this figure seems to be contemplating life itself, maybe the meaning of it, maybe why this hell has to exist. Why do we need some kind of eternal damnation to keep people in line? There's a lot of possibilities here, and yet that sort of ambiguity is the key to the doors, to these gates of hell, because it's all ambiguous. It's all being left up to the viewer. As we look at as a whole, everyone can take from it a different interpretation. Yes, we all get the sense of the damned in hell, of a spiritual place, but it sort of depends on how you view it, on your mindset in that given day. Do you believe that you're going to hell? Do you believe that you're maybe going to purgatory, an area that doesn't really exist in church teaching anymore? Do you believe that you're going straight to heaven or no afterlife whatsoever? Each of those would affect how you come at this sculpture, this massive piece. And as we look at if we as we look at the forms, it gave Rodin the ability to really study the human form, but also study movement in bronze, because the whole thing seems to be moving and undulating in front of us. A feeling that is at once disconcerting, but also really intriguing. It really draws people in.